Good afternoon, gamers. I am Super Viper T three zero two, and this is Pack and Roll Remix, part of the Namco Museum Remix and Namco Museum Mega Mix compilations for the Wii, an updated version of the DS game Pack and Roll. So let's just go ahead and dive right in in three, two, one. Video games. So the main movement in this game, you just roll Pac-Man around because he's limbless, and uh, you also have this little boost mechanic that's mostly used to like go fast and also break open boxes. You can also gain a lot of height when going off of like steep inclines, and that'll be used for some tech throughout the run. Um, there's also a break mechanic in this game, which you can get by uh, pressing the B or Z button, and that stops Pac-Man's momentum entirely. So sometimes I'll be using that to prevent him from getting knocked back from like bumping into boxes or bumping into walls and stuff, and just keep him from falling off the ledges. And uh, sometimes I'll also use it to stop his momentum so I can restart it in a new direction with a different boost. And you'll see that a lot at the start of this level. Unfortunately, it's really hard to control, um, so you're not going to be seeing me do it often. But um, if you watch the tasks of this game by Elo Mobby, which I recommend watching immediately after this run, you'll see a lot of just boosting around in crazy ways. So a majority of the game is just uh, collecting pack dots to open these Golvis gates in order to get to the end of the level. Most of them, unfortunately, are not skippable, but there are a handful of them that are, and I'll get to those when we get to those. But for the most part, these levels are just going to be me routing out pack dots in the most efficient manner so that I don't have to backtrack as often, and also so that um, I don't have to go out of my way nearly as much, and I usually cut it pretty close by for the last game. Some of the routes are fairly generous, but others are pretty tight. Alright, so in 1-3, um, you're going to be seeing me utilize the uh, break mechanic to uh, for the first real time here. So I'm going to be boosting into some boxes, and as you can see, I'm pressing Z right as I break the box. Normally, Pac-Man would recoil off the box with a huge amount of momentum, but by breaking, I can stop that momentum, and then I can uh, regain control of Pac-Man a lot quicker. And I'll be using that often throughout the run in various situations. So next in 1-4, we're going to be introduced to the... Um, Night Pack card, which is the first of the two power-ups in this game. It makes Pac-Man a lot heavier, so he doesn't get a whole lot of height from, like, slow boosts and stuff. And also, he doesn't, uh, go near roll near as fast, but he can break these metal boxes, which normal Pac-Man can't do. And he can also go underwater, so usually when he's in a level, he is unfortunately required, um, in order to get past certain obstacles. He can also break straight through wooden boxes, which can allow for some nice little speed strats. And he's invisible to those spears. And next is 1-5, where we're actually supposed to be introduced to the other power-up of this game, Light Pack, which makes Pac-Man's physics kind of broken, because he basically lasts longer in mid-air, and uh, he gets a lot more high from slope boost. So, like, if I did this with Light Pack, he would gain a lot more high and would actually be able to skip going onto that ramp. But Normal Pack actually rolls on the ground slightly faster, and so by keeping Normal Pack for this entire stage, I'm actually able to make a slightly faster platform cycle. So that saves around 8 seconds. And uh, it's this cycle right here. I don't believe this cycle is possible as light pack in RTA. And that's it for that level. So that's it for World 1. Now we're going to go on to World 2. And this is the this level contains the first big skip in the run. Um, and we're going to see light pack in action here. I'm going to kind of actually go out of my way to get the light pack card here. Because with light pack, I can do the slow boost that'll allow me to get up to this ledge that's normally inaccessible until the end of the level. And then I can do some fancy maneuvering, and then using a ledge grab pop from here, I can get right into the gold platform without opening the gate. So that's the first gate skip of the run, and um, it saves about 35 seconds over doing the level the normal way. In 2-2, two, two, I'm going to be introduced to these little bounce pad things, um, and uh, I can use them for some uh, small little sequence breaks here if I can control Pac-Man properly. So I can just kind of get up to these higher ledges. And then, uh, there's boost pads there that allow me to make it to the next section a little bit quicker. I'm gonna be doing that again right here. There we go. So you can actually skip the gate in this level as well, but it's currently task only. And probably won't ever be integrated into RTA, because you have to do a very precise slow boost up to these two bounce pad platforms as normal pack. Because otherwise there's no way to get up there without light pack. And light pack is only accessible after you clear the gate. So... It's very unlikely that we'll see the gate skip there in RTA, but it is in the TAS. And speaking of impossible skips, there's a... Uh, in this level, I always like to make fun of it because the gold platform is actually right behind where you start in this level, and this level is over a minute and 10 seconds long, so it's around a minute 15 on average in game time. So you could save over a minute by slope boosting directly to the gold platform from the start of the level, but it's just barely not possible. 
so I unfortunately have to play through this entire level. And what's really insulting is that in the DS version of this game, that skip is actually possible. So it's it's really really it really really sucks that um, you can't do that here because it would save a lot of time. But um, and this is also a pretty technical level because I do have to collect a lot of dots in various sections of the level. But this level is also a really great example of how the routing of this game works out. As you saw in that section, I barely had to go out of my way because I had a lot of reserved pack dots after the second gate. And that's kind of the main goal of this route, because with those first two sections, you kind of have to get most of the dots, or you kind of, it's just kind of a linear path anyways. And I have a visual here as to which direction I can go to get out the bowl. Um, so yeah, as you can see, this is, this is actually right next to the start of the level. You also don't want to fall off here, otherwise you have to play through the entire level again. But thankfully that's super easy to avoid. So now, uh, this is the first boss fight against Golvis, who's the antagonist of the original Pac-N-Roll. There's not really a story for him in this game, but uh, he's kind of the reason why Pac-Man is a limbless ball, to put it blatantly. And uh, the way these fights work is that you have to eat three power pellets to make Golvis vulnerable, and then you eat him, and you have to do this a total of three times. And the power pellets will always spawn in the same spot, so I know where they're going to be ahead of time, so it's just a matter of getting to them quickly. And I am going to actually be waiting on the third power pellet on each phase of this fight, because then I don't have to chase Golvis down, which could lose a lot of time. And here I have Night Pack, because I wanted to get mainly so I could get that metal box out of the way, but also to make grabbing this underwater power pellet a little bit easier. And it doesn't really matter that this, about the slower speed, because um, I'm going to have to wait for Golvis once I get to the end here anyways. And that's World 2. So now we're heading off to World 3. 3-1 um, three, here is one of the first really notable run-enders. Um, it's super easy to get to this stage and have runs die, because you make a tiny little movement error. First of all, there's a platform cycle in this stage that's about... 40 seconds into the level, it's past this first gate. That essentially requires me to have not necessarily perfect movement, but uh, pretty decent movement. And that was really close there, because another hard thing about this stage is that in this first room, I cannot miss a single pack dot in this route. Otherwise, I will lose about five seconds later in the run. And ghost movement in this game is complete RNG, so sometimes they can just be in your way. And uh, they don't necessarily instantly kill you, because as you can see, you have a health bar. But they can be a bit of a nuisance, and they can, like, knock you off of platforms and stuff if they hit you, which is really, really annoying. But we did it. We made the cycle, and we have all the pack that we need. So now I need to use this car to get to these uh, houses here, but then I can just kind of skip the car for the rest of the level. Uh, of course, you can do these little ledge grab hops between platforms. And I have to skip this platform, which is why I needed every pack dot from the first section. And then you can do some uh, slope boosts here to get to the uh, final two sets of platforms, and I'll have exactly enough pack dots to finish the level. There we go. So yeah, very difficult level. There's a lot of stuff to keep in mind there. That's a lot of runs. I've had a lot of runs die there. Now it's off to 3-2. So uh, this section is terrible. Um, if you don't get that kind of boost there, um, then the ghosts are usually going to hit you and slow you down, and it's really difficult to recover your momentum. And I also have to do that on the way back, which is even more annoying. Yeah, that's kind of a good example. I need to grab Night Pack here in order to grab some underwater pack dots, because I need at least one underwater pack dot in order to actually open the gate. Um, and here's a normal pack card that you can actually skip. So that, and if you did that, you would also be able to skip having to eat a ghost in this next section, but normal pack moves so much faster that it's actually worth it to just go ahead and grab the night pack card and then spend a little bit of time going out of your way to eat Blinky in this section. And uh, he's on a cycle, so I can pretty much know that he's going to be right there at that point in the level. So, oh, get out, please. I'm actually going to wait here for a little bit. If you beat an IL time or update a score of any kind... Uh, the game will take four and a half seconds after the previous stage to autosave, because Namco Museum Mega Mix does have an autosave feature, and I want to minimize that throughout the run. And uh, this would also be a really good time to talk about um, the NG Plus rules for this game, because as you can see, I kind of already have all the levels unlocked, and I have seven bars of health, which you would normally start with three, but there's hidden pizzas throughout the game that give you extra bars of health. And um, because, again, this game autosaves, and you can configure it to not autosave, but that's kind of stupid. And it would be a pain to have to wipe your memory every single time you want to do a run. And that's really bad, because I kind of needed that pack dot. Um, you have one spare pack dot for these first two sections. So I'm actually going to have to lose a cycle here in order to get that one back. But anyways, uh, 
So we just kind of allow for everything to be unlocked. Nothing changes in the base game versus when you complete it versus when you haven't completed it, so it's not really a huge deal. Alright, so my cycle's here. I think I'm just gonna be one cycle behind, which is about seven seconds. Um, this, this level is normally one of the easiest levels to play consistently since it's all cycle based, so you pretty much get to the end at the same time every time, but I missed a cycle there, which is really unfortunate. Could have ended worse, though. Yeah, I still. that It does introduce that autosave thing, so I have to minimize that as much as possible. And in 3 4, I'm actually gonna try to be pretty stingy with um, how many pack dots I miss. I'm gonna try to not miss any in this route for this first huge portion of the level. So, there is a roller coaster auto scroller at the very end of this level that's, I think, a little under a minute long, if I remember correctly. And, um,. It has a bunch of pack dots on it, and you're actually required to go on the roller coaster because you can't actually skip the last gate. And right here, I'm just going to take a little detour into the water here to grab this normal pack card. Um, however, um, you when you die in this game, you'll obviously respawn back at a checkpoint, but you also keep every pack dot you had in your inventory up to that point. So if I reach enough pack dots on the roller coaster to unlock the gate and then die, I can actually respawn back at the checkpoint with all those pack dots in my inventory. So the reason why I don't want to miss too many power drops is because that will allow me to die sooner, and so I spend less time on the auto scroller. So I didn't miss any, which is actually really, really good. So at this point, I'm just gonna kind of wait it here. And um, if you notice in the lower left-hand corner, that's how many dots I need to open the gate, and in the upper left-hand corner is how many dots I currently have in my inventory. So I'm waiting for that number. I'm waiting for the number in the upper left-hand corner to match the number in the lower left-hand corner. And then afterwards, I can just fall off, and uh, I'll be at the end of the level with all the pack dots I need. Now, this does come at the cost, though, because the, my life count is going to change from when I started the level, you are going to see an autosave. But um, the time lost from the autosave isn't outdone by the time save from skipping the auto scroller. So, that's that level. So we get to finish it just a few seconds earlier. And now it's not time for the World 3 boss, so this is probably the scariest level, the scariest boss fight in the run, or at least one of the scariest, because the platform space you have to work with is really small, and if you fall off, uh, if you die in a boss fight, you have to redo the entire fight, and it's super easy to die in this fight, because, again, you don't have much room to work with, especially in this phase. You have to do some pretty precise movement here in order to make it past Galvis before he hits you, because Galvis can knock you off the edge if you run into him with too much momentum. But we're past the hard parts. So now in this phase, I just have to make sure to eat the power pellets at specific times so that I keep him stunned. Oh, I didn't do it properly, but that's fine. I didn't die anyways, so that's okay. Alright, so the Wii version of this game does not have Ghost Land. It just has... it. Just We just go straight to Flaming Fortress. And uh, this level is a bit of a pain in and of itself, but... There is a skip I'm going to go for that has never been done RTA, but since this is a marathon and it's not really a huge deal if I miss it, I'm going to try it. Um, this was actually discovered semi-recently, so I'm going to use a technique called uh, bounce boosting. I'm going to try to. Um, that was act that um, you'll see me use later in the run on top of these things to try to skip over this barrier here. Oh wow, I actually got it. So that's the first time I've ever done that RTA. And as a result, I'm actually going to be able to skip two gates! Because now I can just make it up to this button with normal pack, and I can go straight to the end of the level. So, uh, this is going to be a huge gold split. Because I just I just golded the split by 10 seconds. And again, that is the first time I have ever done that RTA. So, I'm uh, really happy with that. So, um, here in 4-2, it's a very straightforward level. just has a lot of obstacles in your way. There's not too much going on here. There's going to be a couple periods where I'm going to have to take damage and do some damage abuse, um, like right here, in order to get through the obstacles. Here I'm grabbing Light Pack in order to skip some of these Bounce Pack platforms. In TAS, it is actually possible to skip the last two gates of this level, but it's not really feasible for RTA, because the only time save you would get from it is just from not having to go out of your way to collect Pack Dots, and all you're doing is just boosting around the gates. The problem is that most Galvis gates have invisible walls that extend outwards by quite a bit, and also extend upwards by quite a bit, and in this level there's actually wind placed around the Galvis gates that makes it harder to get around them, and the distances are so tight, and it's another one of those tricks where if you fail it, you die. Imagine being one pack dot short. Alright, whatever. So, the skips are just not worth it. You probably will never see them in RTA. 
and uh, now in 4-3, I'm bound by a platform cycle at the start of this level after the first gate, so it doesn't really matter how fast I go there. Um, because I... So yeah, that mistake is not going to matter, because I would have to wait for the cycle anyways. You can't... In RTA, you cannot make a faster platform cycle here than this. Obviously, the task does. And this is probably one of my favorite levels in the run, movement-wise. Uh, and you'll see why coming up here really shortly. There's a really cool section where I get to do some momentum conservation by recoiling off a bounce pad right here, like that. And I can just kind of make my way around this circle, and then I just boost off to the second bounce pad. That's a nice little sh shortcut that saves about two seconds. And I just gotta wait until I get to 55 pack dots, and I can go ahead and finish off the level. Again, one of my favorite levels. But now we're getting to the harder parts of the run. So... In 4-4, we have this long downward spiraling path that has a lot of nice death. Look, that's not very big. But um, this is a long downward spiraling path that um, I have to go all the way down. Uh, there are no gates in this level, thankfully, and you're probably asking, well, why don't you just skip from higher sections of the level to lower sections? Um, you die in this game if you fall too far without being above that much flooring. There's no, like, death pits or anything. That's how the game determines when you die. So, um, the distances in this level are just, we don't un quite understand how the mechanics work, but the distances between heights in this level are just too big for Pac-Man to fall without dying, so we can't really skip any parts of this level yet, um, and I don't think we ever will. Um, this level is also just really difficult in general, because I'm doing a lot of boosts around these tight turns, which requires really specific camera manipulation and holding the right angles, because it's super easy to just launch Pac-Man off the stage into his death. The collision here is also pretty wonky. And uh, because checkpoints are so spread out in this level, a death in this run, and a death in this level on world record base is essentially your run being dead, which really sucks. And I've had happen to me more times than I care to admit. But thankfully, the one death I had was right at the start, and it was early on, so it didn't cost me too much time. But I am gonna have to deal with another auto save coming up. Right. So you'll see the auto save here. So, in 4-1, you saw me do that skip that involved that bounce boost tech. Um, I'm going to be using that to an extent here, because you can also do it in addition to doing it on bounce pads. Basically, you have to boost on the first frame you're grounded on a bounce pad. So, yeah, it is frame perfect and motion control dependent. Also, I do not have any faster way to do this section of the level. If you can find a way that works consistently, uh, hit me up. But, um... You can also do it on Lava, because that's essentially a bounce pad that just damages Pac-Man. So I'm going to be using some more bounce boosting here to skip some of these platforms. Again, frame perfect and motion control dependent. And that's what you saw for that 4-1 skip. And then here I can... I can do the same thing on Lava, and I just failed to show it off. And I'm going to be using it a lot here to skip a lot of those falling towers that you would normally just have to climb up. So uh, health conservation is really important here. So this is where having those hidden pizzas from earlier helps. This level also works on a cycle, and I'm going to be short on health. So it's actually kind of bad. Being at 1 HP here is not desirable, because I want at least 3 HP for the final skip, and there is a health refill after this, but... Come on. Nice. So I'm going to have to bounce boost off this. And uh, that'll skip the rest of those platforms and get me to this section to the end of the level. So now we have to do this boss fight. So this boss is kind of RNG dependent. Um, Golbus can rotate the platform many different ways on this first phase, but you can kind of mitigate most of it by just slow boosting to them. On this phase, I'm going to try a strat where I slow boost to this bottom left power pellet early. And I got it. And I can get these next two. So what I just did there was I just set this platform up so where it's not going to be fully stabilized by the time Golvis starts this third phase, which will make getting these last three power pellets hopefully a lot quicker. Alright, that was basically perfect. That was a really well executed for boss. And now we're into World 5, which is exclusive to the Wii version of the game, and every single level here has a major skip. It's actually kind of hilarious. Um, so this level in TAS is the fastest level in the game, but um, the setup to do the skip doesn't work with um, 
does is not currently humanly viable. Basically, you can slow boost directly to the gold platform from the start of the level, but with normal pack, it's currently task only. But there is an RTA viable setup that requires light pack, which requires me to go through that first gate. But even still, this skill this skip saves a lot of time. It's probably the biggest skip in the run. So I can just boost. Oh, that was not enough height. I can just slow boost here and then make it to the corner of the gold platform and skip the second and third gates of the level. That probably saves somewhere in the order of about 50 seconds. But now we're in this level where the distances between platform heights are small enough to where Pac-Man can fall from higher ledges to lower ledges and skip huge chunks of gameplay. And this level also has a gate skip that I will be going for, where I'm just going to use a glitchy ledge bounce here to just kind of bounce up to the gold platform early. And then there's this level, which is a complete joke. Yeah. And the last platforming level, if you want to consider this game a platformer, is this level, which is 5-4. So this level does also have a gate skip that is done in world record runs, but unlike the 4-1 skip, where I can just kind of try it and it's not a huge deal if I miss it, um, this skip is not marathon safe because um, if you fail it, you lose way more time than the skip actually saves, and it's really, really precise. It only saves about 10 seconds, so it is worth it for world record runs, but not for marathon runs. So I'm just uh, doing this. I'm just going to feed the gate normally. There's still a lot of really cool tech in this level, like you can do some crisscrossing right here to skip over some cycles. And there is a, still another really big skip in this level that saves a lot more time. So coming up here, you're going to see some light pack cards and a uh, some bounce pads, and I can use that to go straight to the final gear of the level. This is kind of cycle-based, but I have a timer queue. I just go right then, and we can go straight to the gold platform. And that probably saves about um, 25 to 30 seconds. And here we're at the final boss. Um, so this first phase is just kind of boosting around a lot. Um, and uh, trying to get all the power pellets in a quick manner, I almost went to the wrong area. Again, power pallets are just always in the same spot, so it's just a matter of getting to them quickly. And in the second phase of the fight, um, I'm going to go ahead and explain this now, because it's kind of hard to explain. So, there are ghosts that will spawn during the second part of the fight. Um, okay, wow, that was insanely unlucky. I cannot... Um, classic marathon lock, that has never happened before. I've died on this fight before, but I've never died like that. But, anyway. So what I was trying to explain is, um, there is a... There are gonna be ghosts in this next section of the fight that have, um, power pellets that spawn on them. And I actually want to hold off on eating them until the third phase of the fight. Because, um, then I can eat them as Golbus is spawning in. And that, if I can get all three hits on him, that will actually cancel him spawning in and will allow me to eat him earlier, which saves around 10 seconds. So um, that this ending part of the fight is going to be uh, kind of fast. And this route I'm going to take is a little bit wonky, but it's the best route I could think of that would allow me to exploit this to its full potential. So a huge credits goes to the Tassel or Elamabi for finding this, because I would have never thought to try this. So, uh, yeah, time's gonna... I, I shouldn't... This, I'm only on the second phase of the fight, but time's gonna be coming up pretty soon, because the third phase is gonna go by insanely quickly. It's basically gonna be instant if I don't die, which hopefully won't happen. Alright, get ready on time. So it's just gonna be bam, 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 and time! Alright, so my timer says 23.24. Um, that is actually... Um, a minute and eight seconds off of the current world record of 2216, which did not have the 4 1 skip, so I actually saved 10 seconds over that run by default. Um, so that was pretty that was pretty nutty getting that skip in a run for the first time ever. But yeah, that's Pack and Roll Remix. Uh, this run is also, I think, a little under a minute better than the run I did for SS4C a little over two years ago, I think. So yeah, pretty solid showcasing overall. Sucks that that five boss death happened, but yeah, that's it. If you want to learn this game, just get in touch with me. I can teach you whatever you need to know. And I am done for now, so I will throw it on over to the host. All right, well, thank you. Um, coming up next, the giant egg.